Hello everyone and join me as today we'll be looking at this Paolo Scafora double monk boots. Coming up! Oof. So, how's it going everyone? Uh, welcome back to yet another episode with uh, probably what is my favorite brand of the last one, two years, along with Antonio Macariello, and that's none other than Paolo Scafora. Uh, with both of them are from Naples, Italy, so I think I just really like the designs and the shoemaking school that's coming out of there. And today we're going to talk about my first personal pair from them, which is this awesome double monk boots in what's called a Vietri calf. It's pretty much dark brown and it has a Norwegian stitching. It just looks great and I've been saving this video until I try them on and show them to you before I can actually finally enjoy them and wear them in the real world. To begin with, I will not go through all the details again that I did in the previous times talking about the brand. All you need to know is that Paolo Scafora makes handmade shoes. Uh, it's one of the best shoemakers in the world. Comes from Naples, Italy and he has some incredible designs and shapes and generally I'm very excited just to look at their shoes. Uh, so I made this sample for myself and it's actually a live group made to order at the Noble Shoe, more info about it later. As far as the price goes you should expect this to land around 1599 US dollars. So today we're gonna go quickly and discuss you know the shoe, the details, uh, close up and uh, what you get for your money and then we will discuss, of course, sizing and availability. All right, so let's begin with a close-up. I will not talk much about the box because I've done it before and you can find it on my previous review. The box is really, really good, really strong, really high quality with, uh, you know, branded tissue paper, some amazing shoe bags. And uh, if you buy a shoe with laces, they will give you an extra one and a certificate of quality. Of course, you can find all the nice handwritten details here at the side. Generally, premium package, what you would love and expect and want from a shoe that costs that much. But here's the reason why we're here today, the shoes themselves. So let's take a close look at one of them. So first of all, uh, what is this? Uh, this is an ankle height boot uh, with uh, or you would say a double monk strap design. So there is, you know, this buckle, this two buckles that go across your instep and help to fasten the shoe, as you can see here. Uh, of course, you have a cap toe here. That is, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit more prominent, I would say, but I think it really adds to the aesthetics of the shoe and I like it very much. Uh, you have a nice, almond shaped uh, sort of chiseled toe which I like very much and this last is called R like the letter R and here's a nicer look at the amazing sole and the shape of the toe area. I think that this design and this last shape fits this particular model very well um, because I, I think it would be a bit too aggressive it will, if it was on a more square toe. I think this is a perfect balance between, you know, being too almondy and a little more round. Uh, one of the unique features of most Paolo Scafora shoes, or at least their signature, is the stitching, which is, of course, a Norwegian braided stitching here that is called a half Norwegian, uh, even though it's 270 degrees. Uh, it's possible to have this model, for example, in full Norwegian, so 360, but I think uh, to keep it, you know, a little less bulky and a bit more elegant as it is now, I think that half Norwegian should be the way to go for this model. Uh, of course, if you take a look at the shoe from, you know, every possible angle, the details are amazing, the stitching is great, and what is very interesting is that Sometimes manufacturers use, uh, you know, double stitching, two rows of stitching uh, across, you know, the the uppers. And at some areas, to cut some cost, some time, they do single one. Uh, however, on on this model, on every part of the shoe that there is stitching, so for example, even at the back, it's double. So they have kept this consistency and this very high 
SPI and stitch density, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the buckles, uh, well, the strap at least, the buckles are silver in color and they look very, you know, they feel very high quality and quite a little heavy when, when you touch them. This is a heavy boot right now, but I do have shooters in them, as you will see later. Talking about the sole, uh, this is probably the easiest and easiest way to figure out that this is a shoe from Paolo Scafora because there is this really awesome family crest that uh, they emboss. Uh, which surprisingly seems to last quite a while and of course everything is hand painted and there are some uh, some pricking and some marks here and they, I also asked them to do a really nice installation of a metal toe tip which you can see is pretty much seamless here. Uh, the sole uh, is just pretty good, very very solid uh, with a, a rather big uh, like rubber insert at the back and the waist is quite interesting because, of course, of the construction. But Paulus Cascafora doesn't focus so much on making the waist as tight as possible. So there are shoes out there that will have a much bigger bevel and, you know, much tighter waist. And, of course, there is some fiddleback, as you can see here. But honestly, as my shoe knowledge increases and my experience increases, uh, just having a nice nice so tight sole doesn't really say much and in the end nobody sees this and I'd rather focus on this awesome crest here. And that's about the shoe. Uh, it has a nice pull tab here which is very discreet and as you can see it doesn't overextend the shoe like just like uh, some millimeters and it's great because my trousers and your trousers will not get stuck in there. Uh, the tongue is also very discreet, you cannot see much of it here and uh, I want to show you a bit uh, of the inside. So, through the magic of editing, and there we go, uh, you can see that the shaft is a really interesting shape. I thought it was very, very... Uh, the, the leather is excellent quality, I mean, like, it's so supple and it's very difficult to talk about leather without, you know, seeing them after a lot of wear, but after you handle a lot of shoes, you can get a feeling of how good the leather really feels. And it's, it's this one is, for example, just flawless. And uh, the, the elegance and the attention to detail continues inside. It's not very easy to show you due to the lack of light, uh, but inside you get a really awesome insole and you get a handwritten note in the insole that says that it's made by man for uh, X person or the X store and uh, there is a bit on the back only at the bottom a bit of a suede uh, feel to hug your heel a little better and if you check it you know from every possible angle the trimming is great and uh, the stitching density is again great and I can't find any flaw with this and uh, I've seen a uh, decommissioning of an older model and yeah, they, they use the genuinely the best parts available, like even like a toe, uh, like a leather stiffener or here at the back, sorry, toe reinforcement. It's overall a great shoe, a great brand and definitely no corners cut at this price point. And of course, shoe trees. Well, sort of like boot trees, a bit lower. Maybe this one, mod this model is a little lower. They are extremely lightweight and uh, they're hollowed at this point and very, very well polished, of course, lasted. And you, they have the, you know, this inc like height and handle here, which makes it really easy to, to hold and, and pull. And two classic rods here. You can see a bit more that the hollowed part here, which removes a ton of weight from the shoe, making them perfect travel companions. A uh, really nice shape and you can see, you know, the traditional Italian style of how much the, the instep drops towards the toe. It's really excellent. So, that's it, my friends. Excellent shoes. And let's discuss availability, pricing and fit. And that was it uh, with the close-up. I hope you really like them as a model and a style. It's certainly not for every taste. Uh, some would say it's a bit controversial, some would say monks don't wear in boots. But uh, from Septième Largeur, the triple monk strap looks really nice. I think this one is really tasteful. James Bond is another one that 
sort of popularized the double monk boot uh, with Crockett and Jones. This captivated me and my attention immediately when I saw it on the website. So I made it in a special color, which is very versatile. And of course, as you can see, it's so easy to pair. I mean, dark brown, and it also has a cap toe. It really looks like a almost a regular monk shoe, which goes perfectly with navy, with lighter sage of gray, with other sage of brown, olive, and you can wear this with jeans, chinos, and of course, suits. So it's a very versatile piece for a rather expensive price. Uh, this is 1,599 US dollars, and uh, it's live for a group made to order until 15 of April 2021. Uh, if you are interested in getting this spe specific pair, you can either go through Paolo Scafora or send me an email uh, or leave a comment down below, uh, which I'll leave in the description. Uh, but importantly, let's talk about sizing. Uh, I found Paolo Scafora last, most of them, to be very consistent when it comes to sizing, uh, with the exception of some that are quite very narrow, soft square, then I would really tell you to take them true to size. Most of them, 9 out of 10, uh, they run half a size large, at least in my opinion, and that's how I've been selling them to clients or discussing fit and availability with other people. So this one is on the R last, which is definitely, I would say, half a size larger than, you know, a USD width. So for sizing, I uh, usually wear UK 8 in, you know, Carmina Rain, Mermin, most Crockett and Jones, Sand Crispins, etc. So for this one, I size down half to UK 7.5. So you either take half a size down from your UK regular size or one and a half size from your regular US. So for example, you are a US 9D, you would take a UK 7.5 on these and they fit really well. So they fit really well and they have my, they hug my heel very nice here at the back. The due to the to the buckle it's it's quite snug and nice at this area around the instep, but it's not it doesn't pressure it that much. Uh, so it is you would say rather comfortable and I would expect it to open up a little, you know, I stretch a little while I wear them. And oh, thankfully the, the width, the width is perfect. I often get some pinching on my small toe, but nothing so far with these. I, I will reserve some extra judgment and make some, you know, uh, extra updates in the comments if I find out more. Uh, the only difficult part that I found while trying them on is to take off the, the buckle, like uh, to unstrap it. It was a bit of a struggle the first one or two times, but after that it's quite easy and quite nice. And uh, as for the styling, I already told you that it's very easy to match and very easy to, to pair. Uh, it's, it's definitely not a style for, you know, for, for everyone. Uh, this is a style for those that have figured out most of the stuff in their collection and look to try, you know, something different, something more high-end as well because while this costs quite a lot of money, this is an excellent handmade shoe. So it is along the same price points as the San Crispins, and there's no way, there's no way I would pick San Crispins, for example, compared to these, both on aesthetics, leather, and designs. And if you are the kind of person that likes this uh, Mediterranean, or like Southern European aesthetic in shoes and lasts and shapes, it's definitely a brand that you should consider. And that's about it. Excellent shoes. I look really forward to wearing them next week in the real world. And that concludes our shorter video today. I am really thankful for you watching. And if you're new to the channel, uh, there's going to be a lot of content, not just shoes, but shirts, ties and suits eventually. And as I said, if you're new here, please consider subscribing, leaving a thumbs up and generally letting me know in the comments down below what you think about the channel, what you would like to see next, uh, or just feedback that you may have. And thank you very much for watching. But before you go, I always have a dad joke for you. So why don't eggs tell each other jokes? Because they'd crack each other up. <laughs>
<laughs> that was yet another great one, huh? Well, if you have more jokes, let me know down in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.